side as proud Americans. That's the way I always like to voice it. Uh, but first and foremost, <coughs> pardon me, we don't know what caused the first fire. Probably uh, in accidental. Could have been intentional though. Nobody's ever actually recorded that. But they had to rebuild because this was still the seat of government. So they rebuilt and it was finished in 1752. So that's the building that a lot of people you've heard of would have known. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, James Madison. Patrick Henry, mm -hmm. because they're elected as Burgesses. So this is their Burgess, by the way, that's the House of Burgesses. That's an old British legal term. It means representative of a borough. Today you'd call a borough a county. So again, a legislature, your elected officials. Uh, and again, we feel very, very happy that we have a legislature on this side of the Atlantic because it makes us feel like free Britain. So anyway, that said, what we also have here is a second fire in 1831. Now, 1831 was a different time for this town. Thomas Jefferson relocated the seat of government to Richmond for security purposes, and then they used this as a law school, and yet again, it burned down in 1831. Uh, so at that time, it was being used as nothing. It was abandoned. They thought about touching it up and rebuilding it. It might have been struck by lightning, for all we know. I'm still trying to figure that out today, actually. So what you see here is built on the original brick foundation, just like if you've been to the governor's palace. Same foundation, same floor plan, only we have more eyewitness descriptions and sketches of this one. So we've got a pretty decent amount of details. So we can go right on in. So if you have questions, don't hesitate. Pictures are okay if you want to take them. Try to avoid taking them on any steps. We're not really going to worry about too many steps. We're still sticking to the first floor as of now, but still going to tell you the whole story that we usually do. So if you're ready, we can go on into the high court and talk about those matters. If you'll follow me. Questions are, oh yeah, I already mentioned, yeah, questions are fine if you have it. The building you see in town is reconstructed. Some of them are the original buildings. Uh, Bonnie Williamsburg's founded in 1934, so they had a retro fit. is a representation of the, again, think of it as the Supreme Court. They would have called it the General Court. Let me uh, explain some of the aesthetics you see. Uh, first and foremost, we have these balconies in here. There's a letter about a court case that mentions onlookers from the balconies, so we know they were here. Just didn't say who was up there. Probably lawyers and their students. Could have also been people who showed up first or someone that has some relation to the case but it's not part of it. Now you all, the general public, you're all allowed in here, every single one of you, be you man, woman, child. Uh, enslaved people might need permission. There were free African Americans in colonial Virginia. They were only 4% of the population, so not a whole lot, but technically as a free person, you can't be barred from entering this court because you're gonna know the law. You know, you'll know what good things happen when you follow it and what not so good things would happen when you break it, and that is blatant in this court. Um, so again, you might, I don't know how many of you all have been to the courthouse we have down the street, that's a local court, so if you've heard, if you're down there, you'll probably, some of this will sound familiar, but I think all of this will sound familiar to you anyway. Um, you all are allowed in, you just don't sit down, those benches wouldn't be there, we don't care today, so stay seated all you want. Uh, if you are standing good, you're historically accurate, they would have called you bystanders, because you're literally standing by. Makes sense, right? Uh, if you are on trial, you stand trial here at the center of the bar. 
if you're here on it, there are appeals to systems. You can appeal to this court. You would just uh, find yourself standing at either end of the bar because it's not a criminal matter. You didn't do it. Now, if you have passed the bar, then you get to step on this side. Any lawyers in here or future lawyers, maybe that should sound familiar, right? Because that's what happens when you finish law school. You have passed the bar. So you have the Attorney General over here, the Attorney General, the Chief Prosecutor, one of the few paid political positions in the colony. Uh, that said, you have the jury, clerk of court, and again, one of the reasons they don't let you sit is you would not be permitted to sit in the presence of these men. These are the king's active, living, breathing representatives because the Chief Justice on this court is the royal governor himself and his council members are his fellow justices. Now, the royal governor is always an appointee from usually England. It's got to be somebody who's very closely related to the king, not quite related per se, but, but then the council are Virginians. Every colony's got a governor's council. So they are from the colony. Yes, they're wealthy. They have direct connections back to England. Just, just the way politics are. I said uh, Queen Anne. She was the monarch. Again, Anne was present as the queen when Williamsburg City was founded. So they left her up here. Back then, apparently left her up here during the uh, Revolutionary War, which makes sense. She didn't do anything to us. After her comes her uh, her cousin, George. George the First. That's how the House Hanover reaches it. Uh, she dies childless, and they had to find a new heir, and it must be a Protestant king, so they pick her cousin. So, uh, again, other than appeals, yes, crimes are tried here. It depends on what kind of crime, though. So if you go down to the local court, you'll hear about misdemeanor crimes. Now, again, enslaved people, I won't call it a right, but, you know, they are given the um, means to stand trial by jury. But, oh, excuse me, there is no jury when enslaved people stand trial. They're not going to be here. You don't try enslaved at this level. They can be tried for felonies at the local level. Free people, you, if you are suspected of a felony crime, you are transported to this city, no matter where you come from. So you're in cuffs, and they're pretty heavy chains, of course, and then you're kept, there's, I point in this direction, because out there there's the jail, which is an original building, by the way, and that is where you are kept. That's not a punishment. That's just flight risk, a matter of convenience. Again, if you are suspected of murder, uh, grand larceny, manslaughter, assault, any willful, intentional harming of another person, piracy, treason, this is where you would stand trial. And if you are standing trial for any of those crimes, your life is in the hands of these justices. Because the outcome is either you are found not guilty, or you will be found guilty and sentenced to death, hang by the neck until dead, and may God have mercy upon your immortal soul. Every felony is punishable by death in this period. It may sound grim, but that doesn't mean every single person was put to death. And let me explain why. The court system, especially the British court system, they prided themselves on efficiency and fairness. Fair and speedy trial. They mean that literally. So if you're going to talk about how fair you are, maybe give a little leniency. Maybe somebody didn't mean to commit this crime, or maybe they're genuinely repentant. So sure, we've got ways out of the hanging. Uh, you can get a pardon. Getting a pardon takes a while, by the way. It's not a sudden, easy thing, especially today. Back then, the only person that can pardon you is whoever wears the crown. I'll give you an example. We had a woman here in the 1740s. Uh, Abigail Briggs was her name. I think it was the 1740s. It was a few, definitely 20 years before the Revolutionary War. Uh, she was put on trial for murder, and uh, she did hit a man over the head with a shovel, and he died from it. She claimed he was attacking her, and the jury didn't buy it, even though two, nobody saw it, but two witnesses claimed that, yes, this man had a history of being violent. And uh, she did, she was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. But the governor, Governor Francis Falk here, he didn't think that there was enough evidence to convict. So he appealed to King George II for a pardon, and uh, Abigail Briggs got a pardon. However, because she has to stay in jail until she knows what her sentence will be, she spent six months in jail. But the moment that the pardon reached uh, Virginia, she was free, and that was it. She went back home. So usually, when people found guilty of a felony, they want the quicker way out. And that's fine. The only prerequisites are that you don't have any former felony convictions, no prior felony convictions. This has to be your first one, and it can't be a willfully violent crime. You know, manslaughter is different from murder. Manslaughter is you ran a fellow over with your carriage and he died from it. Just to give you an example. 
Uh, so as long as you didn't commit murder or any willful violent crime and you haven't been found guilty before, uh, upon a felony conviction and a sentence to hang, you have the right to request benefit of the clergy. The clergy, again, we're saying, let's have a little mercy here. So, that's fine. You don't have any prior convictions? Fine. Go home. We won't hang you, but behave yourself. It's fine. Sounds good, right? It's just one last step just before you go. Uh, before you go, to prove you've had benefit of clergy, uh, your hand would be tied down to the bar of justice here. The sheriff would come in with a nice hot brand, the first letter of whatever crime you committed, and you'd be branded on the palm of your left hand. Sounds good, right? Better than hanging? Yeah, that's what I thought. I believe they sound harsh. That's not a punishment. People just need to know that you're a convicted felon. You know, what you can do is go on into the legislative hall, talk about legislative matters and also revolution and just stuff that applies to everybody. We're going to go on in even for uh, your, the sake of your time. But don't worry about it. Come on through. There's the Daniel. And yes, it is really creepy at times. You've ever wanted to